And now let's install this Unix IDPC package. So we should have PTH. Let me just double check that. PTH configs in a binary. Yep, there it is. So let's. What's this one? Control Yeah, it's the same. Um, not sure if you'd want that or not. I suppose we could add it in. I guess if you're installing drivers, you probably want the configuration as well for those drivers. So let's build that. Uh, configure it, sorry, now we should build it. It's done, there's no um, test suite, so we'll just install this package. And that's complete. So that was, uh, what was it, Unix? Was now. Something needed it here. And I'm lost. I'd love to find that. Um, Search for that. Well, oh, there it is under general utilities. All right, Cyrus Sazzle. So this has got. Oh, looks like we need PostgreSQL. So another database to install. Looks like we've got all of these. We've certainly got these two. In fact, I'm pretty sure we've got these two. Let's. Oh, well, it's just a few files. We can view this. See if we've made this change. Uh, let's look for OSSDTT B4.4. Yeah, there it is. So that's good. And oh, I think we've got these as well. Let's double check these. Looks like we've got open jade. Yep. Open SP. Uh, 
Let's, let's try this X. Yep. Dot book. Just files. So let's take a look at this catalog. found that so looks like we might not have installed this using the most current version of three Don't book well, we have got it the looks of it Not configured it properly. The above installation script updates the catalog using only the most current 3.x version of Dotbook HTML DTD. The following, all right. So maybe we haven't added this, yeah, because it looks like we've done this. We've got this file, um, so let's edit this HTML DTT 3.1. Yeah, it's created the directory. It's installed the catalog, yeah. <clears throat> Single major version catalog names. Yeah, I think we need to add in this information here. So actually what I'll do is just run the script that we've got there. I wonder if that's caused any problems with the uh, some of the documentation. Um, Let's come out and edit it. So yeah, that's in there now. Um, that was dot book three dot one. <coughs> I vaguely remember one of these packages not testing correctly, and that must have been the reason why. Um, I'm tempted to reinstall this to test it again. Yes, that's right. I think one of these commands or these subsequent commands didn't work. So I might just test this, install it again and test it. Um, I hope it hasn't affected anything else or crazy, though it would be more to do with documentation, I would have thought. Or it could be any type of XML type stuff. Um, Let's do this talk as xvf doc book d triple s l seven nine. <coughs> all this um, actually is that going to overwrite anything 
can make sure have right stuff. Uh, although it doesn't warn us about it if we reinstall, so it should be okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do them anyway because they should exist. So, for example, <coughs> um, let's have a look at that directory. There's stuff there. There's a catalogue we can view. Let's see the stuff in there. So. I'm not going to modify that at all. But we can do the tests. Yes, yeah, so I do. This is coming back to me now. These first few commands worked. So let's first just produce no output to the screen and create a file name called jtestrtf. So yeah, let's produce that. Should only return the following line. Yes, it's done that. So I should produce no output and create a file called test.rtf. There it is, test.rtf. No output. And it should create a file name c1.htm. So yes, that's actually working out. So obviously that bit I'd left out would cause that problem. So I don't think there's anything else to do with this. So we can now install PostgreSQL. A another user and group to add. With several configuration items to add functionality with optional packages to PostgreSQL use configure help to see a list. Okay. Let's do that. <coughs> yes, there is quite a few there. Um, they've given us some options down here, so let's start with those. Let's do the said. this configure command. Let's see what other options we've got. Enable thread safety. And, uh, open SSL. That sounds like a good one. With Perl to add some bindings. Python. So we use Python 3 as Python 2 is not supported anymore some TCL bindings. So let's see if this produces a summary and we can tally that up with any extra um, packages that haven't been identified. Oh no, it hasn't. So I suppose what we can do is run the help again. I mean, there's loads here. We could add in quite a few if we go down the list. Um, there's our LVM support. We've got that. Pick up the characters properly. There's ICU we've got. TCL already added. 
Perl we've added, Python we've added, we've got GSS API, I'm pretty sure we have. Um, I'm not going to add the Kerberos server because it doesn't look like it's working properly. Um, we can add in with Pam. LDAP we haven't got installed yet, so I'll leave that off. We've got an SSL. We've got XML. We've got the XSLT. Seems to be quite easy. Do? Well, I don't know if it does or not, so let's try with these options and see if it complains. <coughs> Well, there's no complaints there, so it looks like it's okay with those. Um, so let's run make now to build the package. Right, so that's built. Um, so we now install it. Oh, sorry. Um, no, big pardon. Look at the wrong section. Um, there's some extra tools and other extra programs we can build in the contrib directory so let's build them while we're here build them all build individual ones so if we have a look there's quite a few there so I'm just gonna uh, sorry we don't need to go into this directory just run the make C contrib let's build them So it's done that. Now it says test must be run as an unprivileged user because they need to start temporary server and this is prevented at root as root. For the same reason you need to stop all post SQL servers if you're running if any are running. So we should be okay. So let's just run make a check. And wait for this to finish now. Okay, that's done. Let's install make install and some documentation as well. 
and then make minus C contrib install for the extra tools that we built as well. Uh, so do minus E. Again, um, having PostgreSQL as a client on a single machine doesn't really make sense. I guess if we're just building this just for the sake of building it, it doesn't need to, we don't need to do anything else. Um, but we can create the server and get it running. So let's do that as the root. And initialize the database as the root user. And you can see it tells us how to start it there. Um, so it's got here to create a boot script. Normally I'd start that boot script, but they've given us a command here so we can. Start that. So let's go into sources, BLFS, BLFS, boot scripts, make, uh, install, post, SQL. So let's start it as they've, as they've told us to using this command. If you're scripting this part, you should wait for the server to start, right? So we're not scripting this, we're doing this all manually. So let's do this, test the database functionality. And that looks like it's working. Didn't look like they dropped the database there, so that will still be there by the looks of it. So we can terminate the database with this command and then I'm just going to start it up as it would start using the boot script if it was being booted refresh. So we've got it running anyway. So that's PostgreSQL and that is in chapter 22. Now let's tidy up. Okay, so let's download Sazzle, Sorry, Sazzle. some config commands oh um I haven't installed LDAP yet have I actually um yeah let's move back put open LDAP in front here Let's see what this has got. Recommended Sara Sazzle. Optional. Okay, so we do need to do Sara Sazzle first and open LDAP and then back to Sara Sazzle, I think. So let's copy this. Um, I guess we'll just take the default. I haven't got LDAP. 
So we've got Java. Unsupported login. And until them, I'd leave them to run supported. So just enabling Java at the moment when I've installed LDAP. I'll um looks like I'll probably just add in this with LDAP option. Okay, so make minus J one. And we can have, there's no oh, does not come with a test suite. So let's install it. There's a configuration. There's some details on there if it's something that's important. Otherwise, let's just install the boot script. And let's start it as well. Uh, no, actually I won't start it just yet. I'll start it after we've reinstalled it. So let's now go to open LDAP. We've got all these dependencies, so let's download it and a patch. No real use for this. Again, it's probably more of a server side thing. Um, we can install a server if you wish. That would be more comprehensive thing to do. Um, so I'm not upgrading a previous installation, so. Let's add this user. And then install these commands. So let's run the patch and then the autoconf first and then we'll concentrate on the configure command. Um, okay. Okay, looks like that's complete. So let's have a look at the configure. Um, let's copy it and see if there's anything to add or indeed take away. So we'll static debug and we'll dynamic crypt as password. Modules and configurations, overlays. So this switch disables. That's interesting. It says MariaDB or PostgreSQL. It says. The switch disables MySQL and DB cluster backend. Oh, I see. Which causes configure to fail. Okay, so maybe we 
can add that in. Oh no, it's already in, isn't it? Yeah. So it would be not much sense if they didn't leave that in. Disable SQL. Let the switch of an SQL server is installed and you're going to use an SQL backend. I guess my SQL is a SQL server, so we could get rid of that. Um, can I make that file while doing that note. Let's remove. So SQL. Controls that SLP. Didn't mention all the options, but let's try that configuration. Make depend and I can run make. All right, tests appear to be fragile, errors may be caused. My course test were bought prior to finishing, apparently due to timing issues. Take about 65 minutes. Okay, well we can try to run them. Okay, so that's time make tests, how long these take.
looks like there might have been several failures there. I'm not sure if it's finished totally. Um, looks like it might have done because the there's some failures in that test, but it's I don't know. It says it's exceeded the test. Oh no, fail. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's finished early or not, um, but it does say they're fragile tests. Um, so I'll just carry on and install this. Uh, let's see. Um, the instructions above install an empty LDAP structure and a default snap decomp file which is suitable for testing the build and other packages using LDAP do not use them on a production server well, I don't intend to make any use of this so that's not a problem Some other resources here. Um, so let's see if we've got any semblance of a working system. Um, let's install the scripts first. Start the server. So that seems to work. Let's compare the results. Yeah, that looks okay. So it seems like we've got basic server running, so that's okay. So that's open LDAP twenty three other server software. Okay. So now we're gonna reinstall Cyrus Sazzle as um open LDAP is optional but it's not a runtime option. So let's see if we can find the configure we had before. So that looks like it was enabled Java. And we're going to add this with LDAP. Okay, that looks okay. So let's do make minus J one. Uh, 
That's good. And now let's. Oops. Um, install. Sources B. It's installed right. We should be able to start the server now. It's got Sazol Auth D start. Okay, it's telling us to configure it first. So let's start to right, let's edit that and have a look at it. Okay, set this to yes and select the authentication mechanism below. So I suppose we could use, well this doesn't mean, oh so it's got PAM. Um, I suppose we could try using PAM. Um, let's add PAM in. It may not work because um, I don't know if there would need to be configuration for PAM or not. Let's start it. seems to have started. Um, I'm not sure if anything can actually use this but I've never installed this package before. Again it's just compiling as many things for demonstration purposes. So that was Cyrus Sazzle. Oh yeah, so now we need to install an MTA. Um, again, I've never done any of these, so I'm just going to have a look at them. So which might be the easiest to install. Um, so we've got a reasonable amount of, a reasonable number of dependencies. Um, okay, Senma looks quite basic, which is probably adequate for our needs. Got the old app. Got Cyrus, got Ghost Script for documentation. Let's look at prop mail. So that's a recommendation. It looks like we need to install send mail, install prop mail when we've got an MTA, and then go back and install send mail with prop mail existing. So let's tidy up first and download proc mail and a patch and let's Expand this now. And let's not just install it. It's asking us some questions.
Oh, sorry, I'm doing this wrong around. This should be the other way around. Uh, to install send mail first of all. So, because an MTA is recommended. So let's remove proc mail. Go to send mail. Yeah, prop mail's a option, so let's save in case. And a patch. So we've got a user and group to add. This information says it all to uh, read the read mail in send mail um, to find out how to link in optional packages in these examples. Does SAS all start TLS, which is part of own openness cell and open LDAP? So we can use all of those. Uh, right, okay. Need to be in the uh, send mail source directory. Now I can do this. And we can install it. There's no extra config commands. So I'll just Copy all this in. It's no test suite, so I'll just install it. Remove the IP. Make install so this should work because we've got ghost scripts installed yep there's no errors there and then we can put them in the final destination and that's okay configuration sure you have a fully qualified domain name and etc host yep got that Create the local send aliases. So let's add that in. Send mail's primary configuration file. that in and then we've got a boot script as well so again because we're going to reinstall send mail I'm not going to start that in the moment um, so I'll defer that and I'm going to come out of this tidy up And install prop mail. So we install this just as the root user. So it looks like it found the send mail this time without asking what it was and that looks like that's installed let's order us to that one
So let's mark that off as complete. Chapter 19. Let's proc mail. And now we'll reinstall send mail. So we don't need to add the group or user anymore. We'll run this in again. Configure this. There's no config for this, was there? No. So it should pick up the proc mail now. Come the root and install reinstall it recreate documentation and install that and we can just check this hasn't been overwritten Okay, that's the host name, and then check the aliases file. That looks okay. Let's run this new aliases in case it needs to be regenerated, and let's rerun this command as well. Okay, so that needs to be updated. Right now, we can. Go to BLFS boot script. And to make install send mail. And we can start it as well. And that looks all good as well. So let's mark that off first. So that's 21. And we'll get rid of postfix, xim, dovecut, and mouse software. And we've now got image magic. So we should have most of these installed by the looks of it. Indeed we do, which is good, makes this a lot easier. Well, we've definitely got, let me tidy up first. Uh, Okay, we've definitely got LLVM cups, curl, FFM bag, we might not have, no. FFTW we've done, P7zip we haven't got, Sane is for scanners, um, oh, do I bother with that, let's have a look at it. Yeah, I guess we can probably compile that. Looks fairly straightforward. Um, X term. Well, I hope we've got that because we're using it at the moment. So, don't see. Look at that. Jasper, we've got. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, little CMS one. We've obviously got two. Let's have a look at. Yeah, we 
we've only got the first one, so we need that one. So we've only got version two, not the first one. Um, LibXiv, LibGXPS, JavaTab, PNG, LibRaw, Lango, Fonts, Google, Script, Gimp, Graphics, Inkscape. Right, I haven't got Inkscape, but I've got that to install and in script. Right. And script cannot convert you to fake encoded text to postscript issues discussing the data. Solutions to use patches and end script for converting UTF. Right, well I don't think we need to do that so we can just install this. Um, Inkscape's got a few dependencies. So let's start getting through this lot now. Right, so it looks like the only thing we need to change is the media type to A4, which is the default, but I'm going to put in A4 anyway. And so that's the size of paper that's used by standard here. Yeah, it seems to have taken that. Let's do make to build it. And it looks like we do some make info as well. That's done got text live installed so we can build a PDF documentation and run make check to test it. That looks good. So let's install it and some PDF documentation as well. And that's done. So that's 50, section 50, post script. So we've got, um, well let's come back to this, let's do some of these ones to the right here first. FFmpeg, that's a biggie. So it looks like same needs V4LU tills. Looks like oh we just need STL2 looks like it. And IBUS and Dconf and lip notifier. Notification daemon. Well, we're going to build XFC4, so I won't build that one now. I'll use this notification daemon. And lib Canberra we need here. And G Streamer. Okay, so we can install this. Let's tidy up here. If you do not have objective C compiler installed to build some package, remember a warning about first time to check timers and safe to continue. We probably have because we rebuilt GCC with a load of extra languages. I can't remember off the top of my head if that was included or not. But um, 
it says it's not a problem anyway. So let's build this. Okay, so we can test this with Ninja Test. So that's passed and it says if you're reinstalling GStreamer to remove the old files first, so we're not doing that. Let's just uh, do ninja install. And it's done. So that's under chapter 42. Canberra. Just quickly checking, we've got everything else. Um, did have some rebuilds with the Alsa. No, not with the Alsa loop, so that's okay. Um, oh, have we got lip four bits? Not sure about that one. I just think we might have. Yes, we have. Okay. That's good. And should we have to download this and build it then? So, um, we've got GTK 2 and 3, so it looks like we can just take the default configure commands. So there's no test suite, we'll just install it, and it's done. So that's chapter 42 again. Right, notification daemon. Let me check. I don't think we have got this one. Let's just see what XF E4 says about. It doesn't say that there's a problem or any conflict with it, so that's okay. Let's configure and build it. Um, 
make install it, no testing. And I've got a couple of commands here to test if it's working. Not sure how you receive that. Maybe it can only be done as root. Uh, that doesn't seem to be any difference there, so I'm not sure where that appears. Anything in the top here? Displays passive pop up. Maybe it's because TWN can't display that. So we'll just have to assume it is working. So it's GNOME section 33. Okay, these are all in funny order, probably build order. Right, lib notify. Name Shell and Caddy will provide their own notification demons, okay. So we've got documentation, building facilities, so we can leave off that GTK doc equals false, and just run, oh dear, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Let's put that back there, and remember to put the two dots in, that's better. And now we can run Ninja. and install and remove that package um, I didn't notice where that was now uh, Where did that come from? Didn't notify. So that's 25x libraries. 25x libraries. Lib notify. Okay. So now we're going to do deconf editor. is the main one. It's the one with the version number so it should be zero. So fix a bug and build it and we can insert enable gtk doc just before these two dots. Okay, that's obviously changed again, so that should equal true. Ah, right, okay. Don't need to create the build again. Let's 
Voilà. And ninja. Ninja test. Looks good. Ninja install. And we can optionally install an editor. So let's try and put this enable GTK dock in again. Let's see if it runs. No, it still needs a equals true. So I'll have to get rid of all of this. And just run the meson command again. Yep, and now run ninja. And ninja install. That's good. So that's chapter thirty three. No libraries, uh, the conf. Yeah, the, the packages in this chapter aren't in alphabetical order, so I presume they're in uh, like a dependency order. Deconf. Okay, so now let's install iBus. What we need, there's one here, let's just double check these ISO codes. I think we've got that. That's my size. Use that share. ISO codes, yeah. Uh, Got that, got that. We haven't got PYXDG. Got that one, got that one. So it looks like there's another Python module, so let's tidy up. Set into the Python. And I'm just going to download this into the normal place and just move it. It's easier rather than trying to remember where it should go. So I'll just move PYXDG here. And looks like this is only for Python 3. Just run this as the root. And it's done. I'll just make a note of that my Python list. PYXDG. can do iBus. There's a patch and a Unicode character database. Let's go back, extract the package. Let's unzip this UCD database. Okay, it's got to be a root because we're installing it straight into the system. Okay. Fix something with S, SED said. And patch security issue. And we can configure this next. 
there's a few extra options. So we didn't install the emoji dictionary. Um, oh, but we need to omit the Unicode. Yeah, we need to omit that bit. And we need to bring back the disable emoji dictionary. So we've got GTK2, we can leave that. Enable Python library. Enable Wayland. There's Python 3. So it builds it alongside Python 2. And enable GTK doc. So that looks okay, yeah, we've not installed the emoji dictionary. Looks fine. So let's do this remove. And run make. Okay, that's finished. Let's run the tests. It says one test will fail. Okay, so it's putting a window on the screen. So I'll just left click another one. Another one. Is it waiting for me to press a button to look to it? Maybe. So there was a failure there. Let's just go back. I did see some red go flying past. Yeah, one failure. I must compose. Okay, so now we can install this. That's complete, so that's in general utilities. My bus. Right, so um, lip sample rate. We've got pulse audio. We've got Alsa. Let's have a look at lip sample rate. I think we've got it. Send a file. Resample. Yeah, we've got that. That's good. I think we installed STL version 1 previously, yeah. So this, this binary is called STL2 config. 
So let's download this one. So it says if you're building a 32-bit system, apply the patch. So again, this checks for the processor type or the architecture type if you like. So when we run this, it shouldn't do anything. And it hasn't because we're on 64-bit. So that's intelligent. It doesn't matter whether you run that on a 64-bit. So let's run the configure. Let's see what other options we've got. Disable as shared. There's still deal open. I don't think I want any of them, so we'll just configure and make. So let's build some documentation. Now it says about running tests, but it doesn't say what command to run. So if you wish to build and run the package regression test, do not delete the static libraries below until after the tests are built. It doesn't say how to build them. So just going to carry on and install uh, the package. And the documentation. And that's complete. Chapter 42, STL2. Now we're on to the video for Linux utils. So we should have all of this, we do. Let's download it. So there's nothing to think about with this one except for copy and paste. It's not even a test suite. Should we say make install? Okay, looks like that's relink V4L. So this might be, let's do the um, LD config. I don't think this will be the problem. I think we're going to have to run the, yeah, the remove LA files. Oops. There's quite a few there. Okay, let's rerun this. That's better. Okay, so that's complete. Chapter 42, V4L Utils.
So now we can build sign, which is for scanners. Let's just double check what we've got of our hay. Optional backends. Lib Demon. Lib Glade, we've got to rebuild. Oh, yeah, and that's because of GTK Dog and FOP, so I can do that now. PYGTK. Let's see what else we need. Cups have got, got that one, got that one. Got that one. And Gimp. That's probably going to be a big one, that one. Come back to that one. So let's do these fellas. PYGTK. PYG object. I'm sure we've got that. PYG object 3. Oh no, this is an earlier version. Right. I better check all these. Um, 80k, we've got Panga, we've got PY Cairo 118.2, we've got Pango, yeah, PY Cairo and GTK2, PY Cairo and Lib Glade. So let's load up PY Gobject. That's okay, and I'm going to put Lib Glade just in front of this to rebuild it. As that was one of the dependencies there. So let's download this. Just double check the version again. Yeah, it's version 2. MVPY object to here. Alright, we've got object introspection, so we can keep that. Oh, it conflicts with... Oh, it's defaulted to no anyway, so maybe it's detected we've got PY object already. That's the version we've already got installed, version 3. So that's okay. Let's just build this. And sudo make like install. And that's PYG object 2 done. So I'll make a note of that one. running this because of GTK plus so I can put in the enable GTK dock and build it okay it's still not working with that Got GTK dock fully built. Which 
everyone. GTK.NKTMPL. Since remember I had that problem before. It doesn't exist. Um, let's look at GTK Docs, see what it's supposed to install. I'll just load a GTK Docs. So I wonder again if this is anything to do with, for example, this missing. Um, let's try something. Let's put that in there. All oh, right, okay, it's no longer available. The looks of it, what date's this? A couple of years ago three years ago, two and a half years ago even. So that's why it's not working um, with Glade. So this so this is, again is another little um, error if you like or yeah an error um, that this switch can't work now because of the new version of GTK doc that exists. So um, I'm going to mark that off as complete then. There's no point in rebuilding that again. Just mark it as complete on my rebuild list and just forget about it now. Just remove it. And go back here and install PYGTK2 so back to Python So adapt it to Pango and install it. Oh sorry, create it, not install it, configure and build it. And we can check this. Oh, it looks like it's putting something to the screen. So something failed there. Um, yeah, it could have been that dialogue that it didn't like, but looks at the seems to be where it failed. So I'm just going to install this. All right, there's an enable docs command here. Let's um, rebuild this then. it failing. Oh, I didn't do the said. Right, let's start over once again. Okay. So let's run the set again. Let's find the 
config commands, that one there. Check. So again, it's waiting on me to click this, and it looks like that's where it's failed. So I'm just going to do make install. Uh, it may be that it's expecting a more modern window environment where the the window just appears rather than there's being a delay with me seeing it appear and clicking on it somewhere. So that's that one. PYGTK. Now we can do libdaemon. So we just copy and paste this stuff here. Make some documents. Install it. And that's that one done. So it's general libraries. Uh, libdaemon. Shut that down and tidy up. Uh, GTK doc. What have I got this up? Oh yes, I was just examining that, wasn't I? So Vahi. This looks like it's ready to go. So let's download it. Looks like we've got another user and group to add. Short should also be a dedicated privileged access group for Avahi clients, so I'll add that as well. And we'll extract it. Let's see what we can add here, monitor, disable Python. Dot. So we don't want that, we don't want that, disable lib daemon. that. So enable tests, test some examples, enable compat how. So let's enable compatibility layer for these two packages here. it was make oh let's just quickly check so it looks like what it's been asked to do the python's been disabled so I imagine that's why that's not being built so it looks okay 
It says there's no test suite, even though we enabled tests, so I don't know what to say about that. I suppose we've got examples installed or will be installed. And we run the make install command. And we've got a boot script to install. Oops. And again, let's start it up now. Looks good. Come out of that and tidy up. So Var here is in chapter sixteen. And let's move on to uh, so, so this name's Vahi. These Gimps are right. Gimps got quite a few dependencies, but it looks like we might have a lot of them built. So I'm gonna get these downloading in the background because they're reasonably big. So I need Gaggle, Exiv. Network, I'm not sure about Lib My Paint. Got these, got that one, my paint brushes. Popular we've got GVFS, Jessica Doc. So this needs DP Latex with PDF Doc, so we can't install that. I'll just miss that LibMNG. So let's take a look at all of these. Right, we can get on with this one. Still coming down, how big is it? Oh, it's quite tiny. There it is. So, straightforward installation for this package. If we change into it, it's better. Install now. And that should be it. We can tidy up. This is in graphics and font libraries, section 10. libmng. Now gvfs. Oh, there's got a few here. Lib USB, lib secret we need. Lib soup, I've got to rebuild. Alright, just need Samba to be installed by the looks of it. GCR, LibCDIO, LibGData, New Discs, Apache Reboot, Memorline Accounts, and Samba's there again. Okay, so let's install Samba then. Just 
Jensen, IMDB or LMDB, Python, or PC, Fuse. can see we're getting to big dependency hell, so we've got Fuse here. Let me get rid of that. I think we did GPGME. Yes, we did that a few hours ago, I think. Um, pass Yap, P1 Crypto Dome. Right, I wasn't going to install Bind, but it's here, so I will install it. Got all these. Lib NSL, POPT, Talox included, and I'm Valgrind, Wireshark, XF Progs. Okay, six we've got. Right, let's hack through this lot. So let's start with Fuse. So the first thing we've got to do is check the kernel. Sources, Linux, make menu config. So this is in file systems down here. And Fuse is somewhere near the bottom, I think. Yeah, it's not set, so We'll set that to a module and we'll have to rebuild. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the boot directory. Now push D. and make backups of all the files here again so cp config to config backup so I'm backing current up to a backup system map to system map backup and cp vm linux to vm then there's backup. Okay, so now we'll do pop D and we can do make install. No, we can't. We're in Linux from scratch, we do this manually. So it's CP Arch x86 64. Copy that to boot. VM Linux. CP System Map to boot. System Map. And CP Config. Sorry, dot config to boot config okay so next I'm going to quit the browser and reboot the machine so that becomes enabled okay looks like there's some problems there with some of the servers we started Maybe because of all the libraries we've been installing, hopefully. We'll see when, when it boots up how good they are or when they come up. So 
So we've still got a problem with the Kerberos server. I might have to have a look at that again. Let's carry on. So now we've got Fuse installed. Let's download it. And go to sources BLFS and extract it. So there's no extra commands to add. So we'll just copy the installation. Build some documentation. Configuration doc doxy file. Okay. So I wonder if that should be dot dot doxy file. No. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, obviously, there's something broken again. something. Let's try and install it and see if it complains then. It looks like it might not do. No, that seems to have worked actually. It's a config file. So it's just some mounting policy we can add here. That's complete. So it's chapter five. Views. Let's tidy up. And get hold of this RPC service. Program. This is straightforward. Configure and make and make install. Seventeen. Python three eight one. So the only reason we're building it here is if op optional modules are needed. So let's rebuild it and all right it needs LSB tools. I've got the rest of the optional. So oh that's strange. It requires LSB tools but let's see tools needs Python 3 to build. 
So there's obviously yet another circuit dependency. These things happen sometimes. So run this and sudo my C to install it. And it says the configuration was done correctly and the ETC LSB release should already exist. Be sure the distrib code name has been set properly. So let's just check that. Yep, I've called it my name, so in theory if we run this we should see that sort of data. Um, is it minus A? Yep, there it is there. So that's complete. So that's system utilities chapter 12. LSB tools. So Python 3. So let's just check. We've got the X pattern FFI. Shop pick yes. DBML, DBM, lib order. optimization okay we can enable the optimizations that might help things along a little bit does it takes a little bit longer but why not It's got with LTO with the said runtime results not, do not appear to show any benefit from doing this, so I'm going to leave that one out. There doesn't seem to be any benefit. So let's try that configuration. It tells us to run optimizations there or suggest that we do. So now it's time to build. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Um, it says it finished successfully. And it says that these modules are not found. There isn't any. Pulling modules found by the tech module in PY have been built and making instead as a set up. Uh, so that looks okay. So let's install it now. And 
it says the test suite must be run separately from the build either before or after the package is built and installed. Do not run make install after running the test suite. To build and install package you need to start fresh with clean source tree. For the test you also need to clean the source code. So let's start by removing the source code directory and starting over. By uncompressing the source table or running make clean then configure again with adding PYD with PY debug. So configure switches above. Run make then make tests. Okay, so we've installed it. Let's do the configuration. And um, maybe we'll add this to the UTC profile, maybe. Let's try Ash on C. Yeah, let's add it to that one. So that sets system wide. So obviously, each individual profile can override that. So let's come out of this. Extract it again and rerun the config with this extra switch. Adding with PY debug. Let's see how we get on with that. So we need to oh I recognise options enable optimization. That's strange, even though it suggested we use that before. So whether it's because of this debug I don't know, but let's rebuild it and then run the test. says it must be executed in the next terminal so I'm going to stand by here in case it does pop up a window
Okay, so that finished and we got 100% success, which is good. Um, especially as it's already been installed, maybe it would have been better to test it first and then rebuild it and install it. So, anyway, at least that's in OK. And I think we can tick that one off as done as well. Under 13, Python 381. So, going to tidy up. And download LMDB. Okay, so no extra options, just a simple copy and paste in this package and sudo minus e with the install command and that's done. So this is in databases, 22 LMDB. So I've actually completely installed all the databases that are in Linux from scratch. Uh, sorry, beyond Linux from scratch, 1.1. And let's do Jansen next. So again, just a straightforward configure make, make check install. And that's complete, that's under general libraries. Jensen, Jensen, or Jensen maybe. So let's tidy that one up. And we move on to XF Progs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought there would be, there's a kernel configuration we've got to do here again, so I'm going to complete that first of all again. So let's become the root sources into our Linux source directory, make venue config again. Um, I was just thinking of earlier about this. LCO, let's try something. TF8, I'm not sure if that might make the characters appear properly. No. Let's try C maybe. No. No, I'm not sure. It may even be something to do with the X term actually. And the character set to come to think of it that's um installed. I can't remember off the top of my head what command that is to see what characters there are. Uh so anyway we need to go down to file systems and XFS is here. So I'm just going to add that as a module again. Um, don't think I'm going to bother with any of these because it's not something I use at all. So as long as it's enabled. So let's rebuild the kernel again. 
and I forgot before to install the modules actually so um, well we just built fuse so it's a good job nothing is using it at the moment because it probably would have had some sort of complaint somewhere to make modules install before I forget and then I'm gonna copy I'm not gonna back up this time. This should be relatively painless this uh, installation so copy the arch x86 underscore sixty four just tab a couple of times to boot VM Linus CP system map to boot system map and just copy the config to boot config and that should be enough that's oops come out of here why isn't that coming right that's better come out of there and out of there we'll go for that and reboot Hopefully we won't see so many errors this time now. Still that Kerberos one though. So you can see it's taking a little bit longer to boot each time now because all the extra services, all the extra demons that we're running. So let's log in again. So did I download this? So look at this. Cover options. Okay, I think I'll just keep the default they've got here. And now I'm going to install it. And that should be done. So that's under chapter 5 XFS procs. Shock next. So let's download these files. Okay, there's there's separate links here, so this is kind of off the book, so I'm not going to download anything from that. Obviously, if you need those documents, then you can download them. So, we need libcat, properly we've got CRS, git, libnl, lure, I think we've got, 
haven't got that one. Haven't got that one. SBC. SBC. No, we haven't got this one. So time on this we have this BC. So we can remove disable tester because we've got lib sound file. Build it and install it. And it's done. So that's in forty two. Forty two SBC. Now we've got NGHTTP. We've got everything installed here. You see how there's been so much work installing all these dependencies, but now we're coming to the point where a lot of the dependencies are built and we're just been like picking up a few strays here and there to to get these high level packages completed. So it's making things a lot easier now, all the hard work we've done so far. So time on it we have NGH. And well, let's build the examples as well. Why not? Let's do as much as we can. No test suites, so sudo make install. And that's done. So this is in networking. HTTP Now Lua, I think we did this oh, We haven't got Lua 5.2, we've certainly got Lua by the looks of it Definitely got it. 5.3.5. .5. That's what's. Oh, this is a different version, right? Okay. And the programming. Let me just check that I have got two versions in the book. Looks like they might have. Yes, there is a different version there, so we need to install this one. And there's a patch as well. Two dot four dot G Z. So we need to create a package config file. And we've got any options? No, so let's just patch it and build it. And it says the installation is complex, we use a Desta method. So I've no, not knowingly used the Desta method myself, but as far as I'm aware, you install to a, a named directory, usually called Desta, and then you basically copy the files to the final destination. 
um, which is why the installation as you can see here is relatively simple it's just basically a copy So we should have another Lua executable there, 5.2, there it is. So that's complete. So that's programming Lua 5.2.4. We can move on to Libby now and see how this list is going well. That is massive. It'll take a fair few more hours to do. Um, so let's save this link as. And an optional download. So I think we'll just take the default. I have some CLI tools. Make check. And we can install the package. and some API documentation too, and that's done. So it's back to networking. LibNL350. So now we've got this C R S straightforward configure making stop. Let's install it now. And that's done. So this is networking again. Now go to libpcap. We've got all the dependencies installed for this one. Patch So um Enable Bluetooth if we know necessary if the recommended patch is not applied because since one dot six one this application needs a fix in order to build with blues. So we're patching it, so we don't need that. Let's disable installing a static library and making 
install. So that's that one done. So again, that's networking, lib pcap. Okay, so let's move on to Wireshark now. So this is one of the, I suppose you could argue first, if not the first proper application that we could actually run. Um, although we've seen Ghost Script with this demo image, um, this is probably like the first sort of real biggie, if you like, that we can run. So I'm just going to double check we've got everything here from memory more than anything else. Oh, right, okay, we've got some kernel. I would have thought that this wouldn't be in the kernel because I think this is for sniffing packets. Um, so, yeah, let's become root city sources Linux make menu config. So, networking support. Networking options and we want packets. So, oh, it's already set, so that's good. That saves us a bit of time and work. So, did I download this? Yes, I did. Okay, so we need to add a group. And we can start building the package. Let's see if there's any other options. No, it doesn't look like it. So we'll just add dot dot to that. See what it says. So it's found all the required packages with the looks of it, which is good news. So it hasn't found libssh. Okay. Thought we had that. It's fine. It's not something I'd normally use anyway. Um, we're only installing it for a dependency for something else. So let's build it.
Okay, so that looks like it's built. There's no test suite, so we need to install it next. Download any of the documentation. Okay, so it does actually tell us how to do this, so let's grab us grab some. Um, let's take the developer guide and PDF format and the user guide. PDF format. And do install. Is it developer? What it's called now. Um, okay. So it's PDF and user guide dot PDF and put them into user shared doc Wireshark. There you go, that's done. So ownership and permissions and add any users to the Wireshark group. So of course I'm going to add my own user. Some configurations. And there's some stuff there about if you want to look at packets. So we can tidy this up now. going to log in again as myself to get into that Wireshark group. Oops, it's obviously a command, I don't know what that does. So I'm in the Wireshark, so in theory I should be able to start it. And yes, yeah, so there's our first, like I say, real app running. Um, I'm not really sure how to use this. I've used it once or twice, but not, not really knowing what I'm doing. So um, it's probably best that I don't click around too much with this. Start capturing data. Looks like there's something happening then. So I don't know what all of that is. So I'll shut that down now. Quit without saving. So um, that's Wireshark complete. Let's install that. Uh, sorry, mark it off. It's chapter 16. Uh, 